the McDonald's is food you buckle in with your seatbelt deal. And there's no reason not to take that extra precaution, because a meal from McDonald's is not just a meal. It's often your most precious cargo. Now get a free sausage McMuffin with egg when you download the McDonald's mobile app. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. McDonald's. I'm loving it. Free sausage McMuffin with egg valid one time through 4-3-2022 at participating McDonald's. Download and registration required. It's Monday. It's February 14th. And it's Valentine's Day. So the word of the day is love. Used in a sentence, I love you, Eli Bosnick. Oh, I love, I love you. you too, buddy. Sorry, I know I'm supposed okay. to make a joke here, but you know, sometimes you just love your pros. Real talk, right here in the yeah. intro. Love you. I'm Eli Bosnick. <laughs> I'm Ethan Wright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Tom and Cecil sit through that intro in quiet discomfort. <laughs> there, just, you're right now, I just yeah. wanted to see how, how far you guys are going to take it. You know? <laughs> like, if this was just going to, like, launch into some, like, heavy literatica kind of thing. I just, I didn't want to bust the mood, you know? There it was. Also, Marjorie Taylor Greene goes full soup Nazi. And we'll talk about a scam I haven't fallen for yet. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight is my fellow skeptic rat, Eli Bosnick. Eli, you're still here. Hello. Therefore, I think. Yep. Okay. Mm. Nailed it. (laughs) Ergo (laughs) soon. Mm. And back by very popular demand from cognitive dissonance and history of bro bro bros, we have Tom and Cecil. (laughs) Gentlemen, welcome back. That's uh, citation needed. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us back. We appreciate it. Now I feel like we should have a podcast called History Bro Bros. I think right? <laughs> I'm, I'm writing that down. That's a fucking Tom, that's a we dollar do. a year idea. Yeah, we guys. do, man. <laughs> Tom, it is a dollar a year idea and we have it. Yep. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we just rebranded under a different name and put up the same content. There you yep. go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Okay. That's All right. I mean, that tracks for History Bro Bros. Making notes, making notes. In our lead story tonight. World War Three, maybe? Like, <laughs> I don't know. We're recording this on Sunday. So if you listen to this on, like, Wednesday, ballpark, it might be World War Three. Russia's about to invade Ukraine. We, we know that. And we found out recently, this is terrifying. Russia was planning to produce a fake video of Ukrainian forces carrying out a violent attack on Russian people. They, like, as a deep, they were going to do a deep fake genocide video to justify their eventual in- invasion <laughs> using corpses which the yep. guardian article that we read is like oh yeah no they were going to use gar- uh, corpses to fake the video and i was like why does russia just have you know what i don't want to know i don't want to know why russia <laughs> yeah. just has well, corpses they not only say that but they say they would involve quote this is a quote from the article they would involve the deployment of corpses to represent bodies purportedly killed and i was like well those are those are bodies definitely killed. What a shame. I mean, they what are losses. <laughs> what a lost. I mean, they could have weekend at Bernie's this whole thing, like put made a marionettes <laughs> oh. and like they were the main actors. It could have been amazing, but they chose to do it. I mean, <laughs> like they went you, the easy way. You examine the video you're like, guys, I can see the strings. It's not even. <laughs> <Come on>. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're doing springtime for Putin. I'm hearing That's calliope not. music when they're moving around. Come on. <laughs> who in the world? Who would be fooled by a video? We're like, you know what? I saw a video, and I guess Ukraine did attack Russia. That makes more sense. That actually, <laughs> maybe this much, much smaller country did unprovoked attack the much, much larger country. That seems extremely plausible. Yeah, send in the troops. I guess. So I feel like it's good strategy for the U.S. and U.K. intelligence. Both of them have been announcing stuff like this. I actually read another article this morning in the New York Times that was like, yeah, so we're... We're doing the information warfare game finally right back in Putin's face, and it's kind of working. We've been just just publishing all this intelligence, being like, this is what they're going to do. But 
that like that's that's good to announce regardless of whether it's true or not, right? Like it's just good strategy. But our version of the intelligence war is just tattling. It's just like, <laughs> um, we heard, we heard that Russia, <laughs> that Russia <laughs> is gonna do a cyber attack. So if you guys see a cyber attack, it was probably Russia. <laughs> you know what's not a great sign for the upcoming world war when your country's defense is we're telling, we're telling everybody. Just so you know. We, that's good. But this I think it's a good great. thing, though, if yeah, we start no, just doing telling instead every, of wars. Everyone's real comforted in their canticle for Leibowitz as they listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> I, the thing is, that, like, in this, in this, like, the, the problem is that everything has gotten so insane and the distrust factor is so high that if you don't see, I, I actually think it's brilliant because people have become so immune to information. So if like Russia put out a video <laughs> and then we said, well, that's fake. And we knew it was going to be fake. You'd be like, I don't know, man. But if we say it's going to be fake ahead of time and then they put out the video, like nobody even cares about the video. You have to actually create the apathy ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> you have to, yeah, you have to pave the road with apathy. Yeah, yeah no, right. that's how truth works. Truth is the thing that comes first. Yeah. It's, it's about it, time. It is now. Yeah. Truth is timing, man. It's not yeah. it's not it really anything is. Else. That's terrifying. Honestly, if we want to wage like this war on on a level that Russia's not willing to, we should have a famous TikToker like show their butthole to the camera at the same time <laughs> as the <laughs> comes up. I'm like, I don't know if fucking we have video but I'm telling you, he just spread his cheeks wide open right there on the TikTok. It, that's it. That's Russian it. bear crawled out of it. It was amazing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I do want to point out, though, you know, there's another side of this, and this is something that, you know, Tom and I talked a little bit about this on the show, but then uh, afterwards this sort of came out. There was a there's an AP reporter, I think, that was also grilling this uh, uh, State Department person and basically saying, look, you're trying to tell us this stuff, and yet you're not giving us any proof. You're just saying that it happened, so we can't be sure. And he, and he basically accused the State Department of producing sort of Alex Jones-like Men material. They're saying you're sure. gonna. They're gonna do crisis actors. What are you talking about? You got to give us more proof than that. But I think you know it's so hard to produce like hard proof when you're getting secret stuff. So I don't know who wins here, but I just wanted to make sure that that there are people out there that are very skeptical of the United States saying this stuff. Yeah, right. We're we're spy agencies too, being like, nope, they did this. Like, do, do you think we actually caught them? Setting up a fake video with corpses, like we had satellite images that, that showed <laughs> them doing like weekend it's at like Bernie a zoom stuff. In. It's like a Clancy novel. It would be awesome if those drones, if they like flew drones over and like were filming it, and the drones had like a little speaker, like we caught you, we see you, <laughs> got you. Like, Fuck. Well, I'm telling corpses. We're down. telling. We're telling NATO. <laughs> Whatever. Nobody reads the New York Times anymore. Their readership is down seventy five percent from ten years ago. You know, I wonder how like angry Putin is when he sees like, what do you mean they said something? They're not supposed to say something. That is not how this works. We do the thing, then we clash about the thing. God damn it! They, they pre lied us. This is yeah. We, we did maybe. <laughs> That, which is great if it works. The problem is that it's like vaccines, right? If it works and people don't get sick, then it was all bullshit. So if it like if it works and then Russia doesn't invade, the fucking Russian propagandists that control right wing media will be able to flex and pound their chest and be like, see, it was all bullshit. And it's like, well, we avoided a war. That was a good thing. I almost feel like we have to have like a, like a, just like a little war, just like an itsy bitsy teeny weeny war just to kind of get the street cred, you know, like maybe in a far off Middle Eastern country that not a lot of people know about. <laughs> Tom, yeah, you just invented Afghanistan. You invented okay, the yeah. war in Afghanistan. I also invented Syria and a big chunk of Iraq. And OK, every time we get together, wars. Tom invents proxy. the war in Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> I just wished I just wish the Russians would film like fake film something worthwhile, like another moon landing. You yeah. know, <laughs> you're going to fake film something. <laughs> File that under things we couldn't get our shit together to do again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wish we had another space race. Yeah, right? So the idea of the deep fake video scares the shit out of me now. Yes. Oh, yeah. Do you yes. think that's oh, going to yeah. become just this huge, terrifying problem for everything? Because we have, we have a giant anti-vaxxer mob, and it was the shallowest goddamn fake 
ever. And they all believe like it was just some guy being like, I was on news radio. I announced kick punching. Science is a hoax. Maybe ask the questions and everybody's on board. Yep. Are we gonna have to hire Captain Disillusion as like our executive of deepfakes <laughs> or something? Is that what's gonna have to happen? Oh He's gotta look at each one and like yeah. measure the pixels and tell us, no, nah, it's not real. Sorry, hey, guys. Can you take yeah. the makeup off? It's a press conference. No, yeah. no, <laughs> I cannot. And then he walks through a wall. Yeah. Yeah, look, look I worked at how- on Independence Day. We know, man. You worked on Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> look at all the amount of conspiracies that arose from non-faked video like the 9-11 video like 9-11 was a was was a unique worldwide event that took place in full view like we all watched it in real time and there's like an enormous amount of footage from multiple angles and none of that stopped any of the bullshit conspiracy nonsense that cropped up around that loose change and looser change it, it fell too fast tom though <laughs> it was so fast how it fell. And it was like, so fast you watch that and it's like all right well no how much worse would that be if the video was not even a real video to start with, but if the right. video was a fake video? The worst thing we've ever invented, the, the worst thing that is going to happen to the world is cheap and easy video Photoshop. When yeah. like yeah. I can sit at home on my fucking regular guy computer and I can casually make video as easily as I can play Photoshop. Like we're yeah, just you fun. can make your enemies do fake crimes and yeah, stuff. Right. It's called yeah, you can. After Effects. Yeah, you could do that now. Yeah. You have you have a nicer camera in your phone and better editing software than made Citizen Kane. <laughs> a terrible movie. <laughs> Hell, they made like movies all the way up until the 90s. Like it's uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I hate Citizen Kane so much. Yeah, we could literally every every home video is better than Citizen Kane. Oh, is this a is this a fight? I'm sorry, I didn't want to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I, I genuinely think Tom not only has a point, but I think it's to our advantage that truth doesn't matter. Like, if I saw a perfect deep fake tomorrow of Joe Biden be like, I, for one, look forward to the war in Russia. I'd just be like, I don't know, maybe he said that, maybe he did not. It was on Twitter, and the, the, no, none of the grownups have looked at it yet, so I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, the people who care about truth are always going to not be fooled because the grownups are going to look after it for us, and the people who don't care about truth are fooled by the kick punch guy. So, like, what the fuck yeah, are we worried about? But the about? people that don't care right. about truth are blocking bridges in Canada right now and making it impossible <laughs> for us to gain access to the supply chain. They're getting arrested right now. I'm very happy so, about that. Yeah, it's wonderful, but it's not like these guys have... It's not like... The thing is, like, it used to be those guys didn't matter. That was the crazy guy at work who was never going to be anything better in his life than the crazy guy at work, you know, who'd, like, corner you in the break room to tell you about some fucking... <laughs> insane bullshit and you'd roll your eyes and kind of like sidle past with one shoulder forward to get away from them. Now those guys are in charge of shit. Like those, they're breeding <laughs> each other. It's yep. mm, scary. They're doing initial coin offerings for real. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Well, speaking of initial coin offerings, I think it's oh time God. for a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Policy Genius. Hey, Tom and Cecil, what are you guys doing out here? Oh, it's Tom's time to look out over the ocean on a windswept dock. He does he does this every day. It's it's a really it's a daily thing. For how long? Until myself and the void are one, Heath. Until myself and the void are one. Are one. Yep. It's it's usually about ten minutes, guys. Ten it's, minutes. It's wow. like ten minutes time. Got it. Um, why? Uh, because death, like life, like this ocean is ever present. It is ever calling. I must ponder. I left my mittens in the car. I'm going to go grab them. Okay. Well, Tom. He, he if, makes me snap when he does that, so I'm going to sure. snap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, make well, Tom, if you're worried about the existential consequences of death, why don't you try Policy Genius? What? What's Policy Genius? Well, life insurance can give you peace of mind that if something happens to you, your loved ones would have a financial cushion for rent or mortgage payments, loans, education costs, and everyday expenses. And Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need. Okay, you're saying I can avoid existential dread just by buying some life insurance? Yeah, you can. There's no better side to the total secession of yourself than knowing your wife won't ever have to work again. In fact, it's given me a level of peace with my own death that some might find worrying. All right, got my mittens. Are they, uh, are they done yet? No, not yet. That does sound comforting. 
Okay, but how do I sign up? It's probably really hard to sign up. Just head to policygenius.com, answer a few questions. In minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The team of licensed experts at Policy Genius will help you understand your options and apply for the policy you choose. Plus, the Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies. You can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you at every step until you're covered. Casey, you got to get hand warmers, man. They're like a game changer. Really? Well, I, I heard those are bad for the environment, though, right? Hi, huh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, it's like the chemicals, maybe, or something. Head chemicals. to policygenius.com to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Policy Genius. You might not be a wave anymore, but you're still part of the ocean. Nice. Hey, you guys want to get some cocoa? Yes. <laughs> yes love cocoa. For sure. Hot cocoa. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to get mitten so I don't have to snap. Done with I can't cocoa. snap in these. All right. And we're back. Next up, we have a story about top secret information being <laughs> mishandled. God damn it. Uh, Hillary Clinton had a personal email server, everybody. If you haven't heard, <laughs> that's what happened. No, this is about Trump. Obviously, you've probably heard his ridiculous thing with his he's ripping up documents and he's taking documents to Mar-a-Lago that turn out to be top secret. He's an idiot. We already knew he was an idiot who thinks <laughs> ripping paper makes the information on it stop existing somehow. <laughs> we already knew that. That came out in like 2018. He was just ripping up official records that are required by law to be kept for the National Archives. Well, turns out it's even worse than we thought. Not just him being dumb. He's probably trying to hide treason during some of this is what it sounds like to me. A bunch of the records given to the House committee that's doing the January 6th investigation were torn up and taped back together like a bunch of them that are important. <laughs> okay, you saw you say that like it's like it's a bad thing. What you clearly did not read in this article, Heath, was his defense, which is basically, yeah, but I do that all the time. I, just, I like yes! the sound of like, ripping paper. It, imagine any other crime where it's like, yeah, okay, but I rob banks all the time. So I'm that just one like didn't hearing count. people scream. What? <laughs> what? Whatever. <laughs> like I have a habit of robbing banks, so like it kind of doesn't even matter. It's just like a thing that I do. It's a quirk. I'm quirky when I rob <laughs> banks. What I love is that we have this rare instant, right? Because the reason Trump has this habit is because he's a criminal, right? So everything he did in business, he got into the habit of ripping up documents so that he could never get caught, right? He was a criminal. And then he just happened to walk into, I, I imagine, one of the only possible jobs where that in itself is a crime, right? Yep. Imagine if you got a job where patting people down for a wire was a crime. He took that job. <laughs> He also says in here that, like, it, it says that they, they thought his ripping up of the paper was cathartic for him. He would get memos and documents, and he didn't like what they said, and so he would mm -hmm. rip up the papers. Heath, because, or whoever, I, because no shit, I think he thought it made it go away. I think yes, that- he it, really did. That is- that's the only way that that's cathartic. If you're, a, it's like if you're a <laughs> petulant three year old and you get like in trouble and you turn your back, it's like if I don't see you, I'm not really in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! This guy is in charge paper. of the bad news, and his stance on bad news was, I got rid of the news so I didn't have to deal with it. I tear it in half, then half again. So like serious spycraft. I actually learned <laughs> that from. Jack Ryan. Uh, sir, there's a uh, pandemic. No, there's not. I ripped that paper up. So it turns out <laughs> it's fine. He runs out into the press room, starts trying to tear the New York Times reporters. <laughs> <in here. laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Grab it Grab by the legs that. and just rip. It'll work. What I love, too, is there's this there's this idea that's on the right that, you know, I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a moment during a State of the Union speech where Nancy Pelosi right behind him tore a p of a, his speech up. She gets oh, handed yeah. the speech oh, before yeah. oh, and she yeah. tears the speech up and sets great. it down. And there was, I don't know if you guys remember, but the right wing blew itself up saying that she tore up documents and she should be put in prison for it. I don't know if yeah, you remember this, but like, absolutely. like he yep. literally tore up secret documents throughout his entire presidency and there and there's fucking crickets. And it, it's really just I just want someone else to be what hurt. Was the so I'm gonna lock her up. It was there was somebody else that <laughs> I feel like it was mishandling. <laughs> Might have been something else too. Yeah. Maybe maybe it was when Hillary unclogged her toilet and they found that server, that email server. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It could have been then. Cecil. I don't know. <laughs> Cecil. You, you bring up an excellent, excellent <laughs> tangent to this story. I think this is my favorite part. 
according to an upcoming book. It's about to come out. New York Times reporter wrote this book, and she is a Trump expert. She covered all this stuff. He was tearing up paper like we're talking about and then trying to flush it down <laughs> the toilet at the White House. Oh, and so plumbers funny. had to show up a bunch of times and deal with shit. this. And every time they're like, you have you don't you have to tell him that you don't flush fit large pieces of paper. Oh, he tore them in four. Still a problem. You can't do that. <laughs> also, I mean, I hate to I hate to say it because I am not the first to point this out. There are 28 fireplaces in the White House. <laughs> yeah. You can burn a lot of shit there. Yeah, man. That, that had to look very like antiquated, though. It's like, whoa, who reads paper on the toilet anymore while he's going over? <laughs> and it's like, read your phone like normal fucking people. What are you doing with that stack of documents in this shitter? Oh, th this is ridiculous, too. They actually, the Trump White House had a taping team. But after, after a little while, everybody's like, this is like, it's like super illegal. It's not even accomplishing anything. We actually, we have burn bags so we can burn stuff that we do want to burn. But he's doing it all wrong. We're breaking all these rules. So they had to have a team follow him around. And like in his wake, there would be just scraps of paper all over the place. And they had to like pick it up and yeah. tape it back together. Yep. This shows you too how fucking uh, uh, like detached from reality and a regular life this guy is because this is his he's just a shitty dude who just leaves everything everywhere never cleans up after himself he's like one of those assholes who goes to the fucking movies and they like fucking somehow get popcorn on every seat near them and you're just like what is wrong with you you right. spilled your soda and it's like down the aisle there's popcorn thrown like it's out of a fucking sprinkler around you and they just walk out Okay, Did you I, bring a team of people who are taping your popcorn together right now? <laughs> <laughs> you were, you were recording a nice podcast and then Cecil started to attack me. I don't know why. <laughs> Sometimes I get scared. Trump reads documents like he's the fucking cookie monster. Just like fucking his <laughs> reading, <laughs> fucking spraying <laughs> shit in every direction. It's amazing. <laughs> I saw one, one person... I think maybe who somebody who works with him, somebody who's been on Air Force One, they saw him. He'd have these giant boxes of paper that he like would print out headlines off cable news and just oh read God. physical, like just the headlines. <laughs> <laughs> That's Gotta what they stay informed, like guys. on TV. Got to stay That's informed. His, That's his intention span right there. Just the headline. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just the headline. But he so he'd read stupid random paper. They saw him at one point. He just like got mad at one of the pieces of paper he was reading. So he, he tore it up. But then he like picked it back up and put it in his pocket. Because <laughs> he was like, I like tearing. Okay, but I do need. I want this. For I, mean, I that do for need that. Sorry. That's me. <laughs> the attention span thing jives with another story that I actually just read this morning that uh, Trump would like, even though he'd been told again and again, he just had the habit of taking every phone call. Just every phone call that would come in, he'd, he would interrupt like security briefings and other meetings if somebody was calling like and that's a that's a fucking I'm so important flex. Right. That's all that's left over from the business world. Hang on, I guess I got to take this. And all of a sudden it puts everybody else in the room on their back foot while you fucking take that call. The guy <laughs> never got out of business world fucking little dick flex. His chair starts going straight up in the air while he's taking the call. <laughs> I'm just picturing him there with like the prime minister of Istanbul. One second, my DoorDash is here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you can just leave it at the front. Mm -hmm. No, I am the president. Yeah. <laughs> Another hamburger. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to shake hands so I could pull you really closely to me? Like weirdly, can I just grab you and drag you around the room? <laughs> don't don't karate me like uh, don't Trudeau. Justin Trudeau he wrist controlled me. It was mean. <laughs> he totally did. <laughs> <laughs> he met with a he met with a guy in a Jodo the day before, and they. Like, uh, <laughs> That's what they're really called, Cecil. They could be called an Odoge or Ojod. Uh, you could you really put the letters. Ojod. Ojod is my new word. <laughs> it's always going to be an Ojod from now on. <laughs> the, the order of the letters clearly doesn't matter as long as you no. use the right ones. Yeah. Yeah. It's officially Ojad and Karate. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Forever. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, I think we're going to take one more quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. 
Hello, my name is Brad Hutchins. Brad Hutchins, nice to meet you. Hey, Eli, wh what you doing? Oh, hey, Heath. So, you know that therapist I've been seeing? Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't think they're quite the right therapist for me, so I'm changing my name and starting my life anew. Okay, uh, it seems a little extreme. Why don't you just change therapists? <laughs> With my insurance? If I wanted to jump through fiery hoops, I'd join the circus, Heath. Eli, changing therapists doesn't have to be difficult or expensive. That is why there's BetterHelp. What's BetterHelp? BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Okay, but what if I don't like who they match me with? BetterHelp is committed to excellent therapy, so they make switching therapists easy and free if you need to. Wow, so no awkward therapist breakups? No awkward therapist breakups. Or changing your name. You don't have to do that either. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Skeptocrat listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right, Heath. It's too bad Brad Hutchins was going to be a lot more responsible with money. I mean, you could just be responsible in reality with your money. Nope. Yeah, tracks. How's the Bitcoin doing? Bad. And we're back. Next up, we have a story about butterflies and crazy idiots who think there's a pedophile sex trafficking ring instead of butterflies. <laughs> this it's is real. Okay, look, okay. this is <laughs> not the This best. is sad and we're in hell, right? This <laughs> yeah, is sad this and is we're in worst. hell because they're butterfly nerds are the sweetest, gentlest yep. nerds, right? There is imagine. no nerd you should pick on less than butterfly <laughs> sanctuary <laughs> nerds, right? Um, until they come up with a cotton candy preservation society, there is no humans <laughs> you should be kinder to than the fucking sweet souls who were like, I just want to make sure Mr. Flap Flaps makes it <laughs> time. Murdering a child. No, no. <laughs> and then fucking Marjorie Taylor Greene's open mouth ghouls kicked down the door and they were like, where are the babies, you fucking? <laughs> okay. And how many the panic attacks do you think happened just when they stepped on the property? <laughs> yeah. That's, okay, this is real. This is here's what here's what happened. The National Butterfly Center, it's in Texas, it's right on the border with Mexico, on the Rio Grande. They had to shut down, possibly for permanently, but like at least temporarily, they are shut down right now after 20 years of delightful butterfly nerd stuff like Eli's talking about. Some lovely people just checking out butterflies for two decades. They had to shut down because QAnon lunatics are certain that they're using the butterfly thing as a cover and they're actually child sex traffickers. That's real. Well, it, and it's it's crazy now, too, because in the interview, one of the directors of a butterfly sanctuary who 100 percent Eli is right, did not sign up for this shit is now packing heat strapped. We are, we are in a world where the butterfly lady is like, no, nah, fuck that. I got a gun. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah. We need butterfly ladies to walk around having fucking shootouts with crazy people. Yeah. Holy shit. There's actually this lady you're talking about who's strapping now. She's like, she told the New York Times, she's like, when I took this job, I thought I was going to like spend time outside with, you know, butterflies and like birds and teaching kids about butterflies. Now I talk down crazy people who have like knife belts and assault rifles. Fucking That's my hell. job now. I have a gun. I have to have a yeah. gun now. <laughs> Do you remember how weird it was when that guy just showed up at the pizza place with the gun? Now these people are just like every single time one of these people gets QAnon famous, there's like a stream of dopes that just show up at your door now. It was like an anomaly when that first happened a couple years ago. Now it's not. It's the norm. They just show up and get all weird and like ask you where the cheese pizza is or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, last month, a congressional candidate from Virginia showed up. Uh, it was a Republican, by the way. I, should, I didn't mention which, which party he was from. Is a Republican. I don't think this. you had to, Heath. I yeah. think that's implied. <laughs> a Republican Heavily. from Virginia showed up hoping to like. I catch them fucking kids behind a giant butterfly wing or something. Like, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. When that cocoon is a rockin', don't. No. Yeah. Don't. 
<laughs> it's exactly. very small. You can't get in a cocoon. Shows up, did not find that, and he got into a fist fight with the director of the Butterfly Center. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the Butterfly soul. Center kicked ass. Oh, God. How amazing would it be if he was like a kung fu master oh. who years ago put down the thing, <laughs> and the guy walks in, and he's like, I'm here to take names. Like, blah, 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 blah. Like, I swore I'd never kill again, but I'm going to pin you to the wall, pretty boy. Because that's the other thing. There are only two <laughs> kinds of people working at Butterfly Sanctuaries. The gentle souls we should leave alone and the absolutely crazy who are keeping it under control. Dexter works at a butterfly sanctuary, yeah. my dude. Oh, I want so bad for that guy to have gotten punched in the face really bad. Like, just, he starts that fight and the butterfly director just like I said, just like sweeps to the one side and just pops him right in the nose and he falls over. Oh. This, Float this like all... a butterfly, sting like a bee. <laughs> exactly. So, and, you know, it's so obviously bullshit. I actually went to a, a butterfly sanctuary uh, with my wife when we were in Belize. And I can tell you that just from a matter of physical structure, there is nothing more transparent, literally transparent, than a butterfly sanctuary. I mean, this is like, don't rape kids in glass houses. It, it's a fucking, <laughs> you can see everything. <laughs> It's a butterfly sanctuary. It's exp what? How are you having of all the secret places that you can imagine in the world, a place that is a butterfly sanctuary that is open on all sides to light and air seems like the least secretive place on the planet. Just see a kid going by in a teller tube just shoots out. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this all started this conspiracy like it became the target of QAnon idiots because the center refused to let Trump build the border wall through their property. Yes. And yep. so they were like, no. And everybody was like, you're murder raping kids. That's the only if you're not willing to put this wall through your property, you must be trafficking kids secretly. And they actually this is exact words. This is amazing. Some guy was like, yeah, they're left wing thugs with a sham butterfly agenda. <laughs> That's a, so, th those are real words that somebody, like a, an important QAnon influencer said, and everybody reacted to this, and now they panicked and started showing up at this place. They made that into a mug for the gift shop, by the way. It says, like, <laughs> amazing. Left-wing thugs with a sham butterfly agenda. A hundred percent going to get that. What's on the butterfly agenda? Like, pollinates, like, up near the top, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> There really should be some kind of an investigation, though, like some kind of like proboscis into this. Just uh. <laughs> how dare you, sir? How dare you? Not on this show. Not on this show of all places. God, this is literally why we can't have nice things. We yeah. we literally we can't have butterfly sanctuaries because of these people. That's it. It's terrifying. All right, you guys want to talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene some more in a different story? Yeah, I sure we fucking always do. want to talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene. Okay. I just would also like to say I would like to never talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene again, though. That's that's actually <laughs> you, the you better know what? world. I'm happy to. So that's one vote for pass on that. Um, I th I think we should talk about it, but I support the uh, the, the emotion <laughs> behind that. <Tom. laughs> but we're gonna talk. All right, we got to talk about it. So in case anyone missed it, Marjorie Taylor Greene got interviewed by. Some fucking guy on One American News Network, but actually <laughs> not on One American News on his podcast. So like rough. And she was talking about how the Capitol Police are secretly running a spy operation against all the Republicans in Congress and like taking pictures of their stuff in their office in D.C. Exact words from Marjorie Taylor Greene that I believe she was reading off her own notes. So these are words she decided on ahead of time and wrote down, I'm quite certain. Quote, now we have Nancy Pelosi's gazpacho police <laughs> spying on members of Congress. Gazpacho. Oh. To be clear, she meant Gestapo. Delicious cold soup. It is a delicious cold it's, it's soup. It's a delicious Check cold out soup. Season Liberally for an episode coming up soon. <laughs> coming up soon. <laughs> Spoilers. Gazpacho. God. <laughs> <laughs> also, just a reminder, Marjorie Taylor Greene literally had to go to the Holocaust Museum. And she was 47 years old when she learned from the Holocaust Museum that mask mandates are, in fact, not quite the same thing as the Holocaust. 
Neither is whatever the Capitol Police. They, they could actually be spot. It's nothing like that. Stop doing that. <laughs> I, this is this is one of those. I, I read a distressing article again that just this morning. It said the most coveted now, even even more so than Trump, the most coveted political endorsement on the right comes from Marjorie Taylor Greene. Shut the fuck Are you up. Serious? What? This, yeah. Marjorie Taylor Greene's political endorsement is now actually more powerful than Trump because she's got all the lack of intelligence and firebrandosity of a Trump without the January 6th baggage. So like what? Yeah, it's weird. She, she, she helped. helped. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. But because nothing matters anymore, that actually doesn't matter. That's uh, you yeah. Should, uh, nope, that's fair. I heard that it when the, I said it. <laughs> yeah, this is a woman who mixed up gazpacho and Gestapo. She literally doesn't know anything important. And I, and I don't mean I don't mean like anything important about history. <laughs> what I mean is she yeah, doesn't know no, anything nothing. important. <laughs> right. Yeah. She got her congressional seat. By fucking default, she was just the only person running. That's it. Like she got, she was, she was the only Republican running in a heavily Republican district. She ran against nobody. Her whole life is default wins. And this is the most important political endorsement right now in 2022. Well, she's doing approximately the same thing as nobody would be doing in Congress because she got benched <laughs> by the Republican yeah. Party. Right. She's not even allowed to be on she's committees. She's not allowed to go to work. She goes to work. And sits around not mattering all day, and yet strangely mattering more than every other Republican. There's an alternative idea out there that I saw sort of popping up on like Twitter and other social media platforms where people were saying that she did this on purpose to get the the sort of notoriety for it because she knows that it'll get her name out there. Do you think there's any credibility to that at all? I don't think she's that smart, to be perfectly frank, but no. Absolutely. I think and standing at the entrance to Action Park, see, I pooped myself and threw up at the same time <laughs> because now you all are going to remember me. Okay, that's a bad example. I, that was smart. <laughs> <laughs> I went first on every ride. So, in your face, I think. I, no, I don't think there's any chance she did this on purpose because if you watch the video, yeah, the you watch can the actually video. see her get so goddamn mad at herself the moment she says gazpacho. Like, <laughs> I think she might have written down gazpacho, but at the moment she says it, you see in her eyes, she's like, fuck, that's the soup, isn't it? I think I switched it. <laughs> oh, and she has to just keep going. So I hope it was just no lazy autocorrect. She did this on purpose. Like, I yeah. hope when she, like, was <laughs> typing. I, like, because that, be, that would be actually as delicious as gazpacho soup. Like, would that would be, be so yeah. fucking delicious if she was typing out her remarks and she fucking e lied it up so it was a fucking jumbled letter salad and autocorrect was like, I don't know, maybe you meant gazpacho. Nobody really says gazpacho <laughs> here. And she's just like, fuck, that's not, god damn it. You know what I think happened in her stupid fucking brain? She, she said in the sentence before the quote where she says gazpacho, please, she said the word gulag. She was talking about like, oh, the jail in D.C. It's the D.C. gulag. In her head, I think she was like, mmm, goulash. <laughs> soup, <laughs> tomato <laughs> soup, gazpacho, <laughs> gestapo, fuck! And fuck. she just had to keep going. <laughs> well, I do like how she tried to recover because she really, I mean, she really like fucking pivoted <laughs> and tried to recover. This is, this is her recovery tweet. Made it so much worse. <laughs> so much worse. So Trump... Came to her defense, right? So I got a Donald Trump Jr., I should say, uh, who's fucking, that guy is fucking useless. Holy fuck. He came out and said all those people in media sources trying to dunk on Marjorie Taylor Greene for 48 hours straight over a word slip up should really go watch Joe Biden speak pretty much anywhere. I look forward to their commentary. And she's, she tweets back, some of us slip up a word every now and then, but Joe Biden doesn't even know the words coming out of his mouth practically all of the time. The good news is that the people know the difference. So in the famous words of someone I hold dear, Kavifafe. <laughs> she fucking doubled down on Kavifafe? Yeah. Mm. Also, that's that's one word, not the famous words. <laughs> <laughs> it is just one word. It is just one word. It's, it's, it's zero word. words, actually. You're wrong. You're even more wrong than I said. Yeah. So I love I love the idea that somebody else once spouted gibberish, so my gibberish. So doesn't it makes count. it perfect. Yeah. Right. I want to I want to talk too because Tom and I very often will talk about like j the political campaigns of people's are essentially job interviews, right? When they go out and they do a political campaign and we hear what they have to say, these are essentially job interviews to the American people so that they can go and hire them if they want them. 
I was thinking about that and I was thinking, is there any job you could think of, and it doesn't have to be political in nature, that you would hire Marjorie Taylor Greene for? Is there a single job that you could see and think she would be qualified oh, to do this Oh, I just this thought job? of several. I don't think I could say them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lighthouse keeper on an abandoned lighthouse in a far away. <laughs> That's island. burned out long ago that no one pays attention to. Perfect. She would. You yeah. remember when? You remember the guys who had to go the when like Chernobyl happened or when like uh, <laughs> they had to like put a plastic bag around the elephant foot or whatever. <laughs> they, had to, they had to swim a under plastic bag. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I mean, this cancer. is. I love that her defense was basically. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she has really bad, like, face cancer. I'm allowed to say that, right? You can hope somebody has you can face hope. cancer. Yeah, no, right? I, I was actually very surprised when Andrew told us you're allowed to hope whatever the fuck you want. Cool. I really hope she has. Face <laughs> Let's cancer. all just hope together. Isn't that how it works? Isn't that's that how it, wishing yeah. prayer well, we works? We have to hope together and we skip hope together. Lunch. We got to yeah. skip oh, lunch. That's it's true. fast yeah, and double the fast. power of your hopes. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're a little, I'll skip you're my little... gazpacho for lunch then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're peckish while hoping, that makes the difference. Yeah. Yeah, it fucks it all up. <laughs> she should have tweeted back like it would have been great if she just quoted the fucking entire Jabberwocky poem just as a just <laughs> okay. Look, there's some very famous gibberish guys. Uh... Twas brillig. Uh huh. Okay, it's not gonna write itself. <laughs> She just says the word Auschwitz out of nowhere in the middle. What are you doing? Do you have like a, is that a disease? Do you have cancer maybe? Brain cancer? Here are some Nazi words I didn't fuck up. Auschwitz. Uh, brown shirt. Uh, that's pretty much all I got. I should Only go back to that museum. a graphic novel to teach her about these things. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. It's banned. Yeah. All right. Well, we have one more story close it out it's a story about tom's favorite art sector fuck yeah non-fungible tokens non-fungible tom as i call them (laughs) the unique tom tokens the uts yeah so the online platform called cent c-e-n-t they're the, the platform that actually sold jack dorsey's very first tweet for 2.9 million dollars say that again they sold a tweet they sold the NFT of a tweet, which is just, it's like the unique digital concept of that tweet in some way, but not actually the tweet. And everybody can also, of course, see the tweet just like you without buying it for $3 million. So that place called Scent had to halt most of the transactions on their marketplace last week because it became clear to them that most of the sales were people selling content that doesn't belong to them. Most of it was bullshit fake stuff or illegal. But when you say most, that makes it sound bad like most is almost every i mean it's the majority of all of the things how can you tell the difference between two things both of which are inherently bullshit Ooh, that, well great question it's <laughs> a great question the ceo of scent called this a fundamental problem <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, he's like yeah, so i thought about it just fundamentally nfts is just it's like just like what Tom said. He he sends me a lot of emails. He's <laughs> angry about this. No, I get it because like sometimes we'll do a story over on scathing about like someone being a fake church, and I'm just like, well, how do you? Yeah, it's how a, do you enforce that, same, bro? Right, same <laughs> thing. Whenever I hear about NFTs, I always think like this is like the snipe hunting of the art world. Yes. Right? Somebody's <laughs> somebody's tricking somebody. Like somebody's like, now nah, man, it's an NFT. And then, and then there's some sucker who's like, sure, I'll stand out in the middle of the blockchain with this bag. Go ahead. No problem. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's absolutely what it is. So just to be clear, in case anybody doesn't know what an NFT is at this point, quick background on this. You're buying the concept of unique ownership of something like the tweet or like a digital image a lot of the time. And that unique ownership is verified by the blockchain. So you own it kind of like somebody owns Bitcoin. And the NFT market, this thing that we're talking about, had $25 billion in sales last year. $25 billion already it's worth. The thing is that anybody, and they tried to actually, initially they were thinking like, well, maybe this is a bad idea. And they tried to scale this back, but they got a bunch of pushback. Anybody can go, you can mint, anybody can mint anything on the blockchain to create an NFT. So I can mint something, and I don't have to. I just made one just now. Right. There's there's an NFT of this podcast. There's no vetting. Four billion (laughs) dollars. There's 
there's an because the entire thing offer. is user generated from the bottom. There's no way and there's no mechanism to vet that you owned the thing that you minted. Yep. And none of it makes any sense. I could snapshot. I could go take a fucking photo of the Mona Lisa. This is legitimate. And I could put that on the blockchain. And that would be perfectly fine because there's nobody saying that photo is essentially the only photo by me ever taken of the Mona Lisa. So it is an original. But original doesn't connotate to anything anymore. I just made an NFT of listening to Tom talk about the Mona Lisa. Right, because I, made. <laughs> I was the only me doing it. Now, <laughs> I, I do want to put our listeners' minds at ease, because when you hear that number, 25 billion, you're like, oh, God, what's happened to art? What's happened to the world? And my friends, do not worry. Most of that is for child porn and illegal activities. Not, <laughs> it is. They don't really care about the monies. It's, um, it's how people do illegal things. Sure is. Sure is. Yeah. So this place, Scent, is medium big. The biggest marketplace for NFTs is called OpenSea, Open SEA. Their company is, it's valued at $13.3 billion just, just for being an online marketplace oh for the stupid shit. And they recently announced, OpenSea did, that over 80% of the NFTs that were minted on their platform were, were plagiarized, fake, and or spam. Over 80%, the company that's doing the selling was like, yeah, just on ours, more than 80% is bullshit. Almost everything, the, 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 best, the best line in this article is, it's just money chasing money. Because everybody is looking at this not as a store of value because somebody ultimately wants it. That's the difference between this and actual art, right? Like, so if there's a fucking original Van Gogh, there's some guy out there who fucking just loves Van Gogh, like legitimately gets him fucking hard as a rock. He loves it. That's what gives it its value is the love that somebody has for this is just people trying to cash in on an investment. It's money chasing money. None of it has like I know, but none of it has the heart that like makes art collection actually valuable at its base. So there's nothing that under this is Beanie Babies. There's nothing undergirding any of this. The difference between these, the, between the art and the NFT, though, is that the NFT also uses like 50 megawatts of power a year. Too. Yes, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it also wastes a bunch of energy. Let's not forget that, too. Sure does. <laughs> well, I would argue that a lot of artists waste a bunch of energy, Cecil. Like most. <laughs> <laughs> most. <laughs> hey, Cecil, we're all having a good we're time on a podcast here in our right glass now? house. <laughs> we're on a podcast. Where there's an NFT of this I just announced moments ago. Can we not just. <laughs> Poison the well on everything. <laughs> so I checked this out the other day because I, 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 I write sometimes. So I thought, like, I wonder if I can just – what if I write a document in Microsoft Word or, like, Google Docs, and then I could sell that document as an NFT? Now, you can't because you can't – it's format type. So I would have to put – I would have to turn my document into, like, a JPEG. But that's the only difference. Like, people are selling <laughs> – like, if I wrote something in fucking Microsoft Word – and then I never publish it, but then I put it on the blockchain and sell it. That's valueless unless it's now a JPEG. That's literally the only obstacle there. <laughs> you could write. That's fucking insane. That's absolutely insane. That, that'd that be like having a copy of a book that I bought and being like, this is my original copy of this book. Nobody else has this copy oh, of this book. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned <laughs> that, Tom. Because it's, uh, it's not part of this story, but if I may uh, take us on a little side journey, poor little <laughs> Heath Enright here. Uh, a few NFT bros last month bought a rare version of a Dune book. So the guy who wrote Dune wrote like a Bible for Dune, which sucked and so didn't get republished. So they bought... The real thing. They bought like the hard copy. I already know where this is going, and I hate. And then you. they announced that they were going to make it into a movie. Yep. <laughs> they were like, "We have several plans. We're going to make it into a movie." And so many people were like, "Yes, I just bought a DVD of Aladdin. Come check it out on Broadway." <laughs> 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 oh my god. <sighs> and in terms of the money chasing money thing, there's this thing called wash sales that are a problem in like. Real securities, stocks, real estate. The idea is you generate fake sales that aren't really demonstrating supply and demand happening, but they drive up the perceived value of the thing because they were transacted a bunch of times. Yeah, every That's Irish happening. bar you've ever been in. That's <laughs> <laughs> racist. I don't know what you even mean by that. But with <laughs> NFTs, they're doing this. This actually happened in January. 
So I think January 12th. So like exactly a month ago, the NFT of a digital image sold for $50.6 million oh. worth of cryptocurrency. Oh and then five minutes later, it got sold back to the original owner for $49.6 million in cryptocurrency. So it's just a whole bunch of these fake bullshit transactions to make whatever marketplace is trying to make their name be like, oh, look, look at all this volume, millions and millions of Bitcoins that we had in sales. Okay, but that's to be fair, happened. when he sold it for a loss five minutes later, that's actually the same number of Bitcoins. Like he just paid the exact <laughs> same number. <laughs> Well, they're gambling. Yeah, you have to pay like fees every time you transact Bitcoin. So they were paying that fee across a $50 million transaction just to like gin up this thing. So it was worth more than that. Fuck. You have to pay a fee every time you trade Bitcoin? Yeah, there's yeah, there's a small fee oh, for every so transaction. So Eli, don't get out when you break even. Get a little hey. ahead if you can. Yeah, you got to get ahead. Yeah. Hey. Just get a little ahead. I'm part of the HODL crew. <laughs> See, that's that's the thing that makes Bitcoin better than using your bank is that your bank is going to charge you fees. Hmm. <laughs> hmm, that's weird. Huh. Well, How am I going to buy child porn with uh, my regular money? Tom? Yeah, that's thank you. Doing. That is Great. weird. That One, is awkward. Two, do we not know where 50 percent of the world's money is? Because that's true. of Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> It's the mystery that makes it more worth. It's the more. Word. It's the fun thing. <laughs> That's why it's worth. Also, this. hey, all the money at the bank is regulated. But imagine if the bank could just sell half of the world's money, and there would be no way to help anybody. <laughs> <laughs> good. I can't help but wonder if <laughs> NFTs are an outgrowth of the anti-intellectual, like modern art is stupid movement to just like fucking manifest that into reality <laughs> right like since 1972 when everyone stopped painting thomas kincaid snowy cottages everyone was like i don't understand this painting i sell it on my nokia 500 so it's probably bad and then a bunch of tech bros were just like all right well if art doesn't have to have it, we all assume art doesn't have any meaning so what if we actually made meaningless art and here we are yeah, we're podcasting. Meaningless it, art. Exactly. It is It is something to strip the meaning from something at the same time that we've increased its value artificially. Like, that's a good yeah. one. That's a nice, that's a nice oh, place this to is be in. Capitalism, proof of concept. I, yeah. I, I, I do want to say, though, this story makes me so... I love that over 80% of people have gotten, like... It, you would think when you read this, it's like, ah, 80% of people bought fakes, and so they've been, like, scammed. But the, the problem is, like, if I buy a fake Van Gogh and then I go to resell it, somebody's going to check, like an appraiser is going to fucking take out, like, a monocle or something, and they're going to stare at it and make sure that the fucking pigment was really painted and created at the right time. But they're going to vet this fucking thing, and there's a whole process for that where you make sure that that physical... But these guys are just going to resell their fakes! It won't <laughs> matter! That's the beauty part of it. Like, it won't make any difference. They're gonna, these fakes are clearly still churning over or the whole thing would have collapsed as soon as 80 some percent of people realized they'd been scammed. The system isn't working because 20 percent of these deals are holding up the system. The system is working because 80 percent of people don't care they what don't they're buying. <laughs> they just want they're only buying it to sell it to the next dupe. And if yeah, that okay. isn't literally the definition of a Ponzi scheme, then I that word doesn't mean anything. Here's my favorite part about what you're describing. Yes, that's absolutely happening. Here's the newest wave, though. It, it happened in a cycle, and this is fantastic. So there's all these mostly crypto billionaires are buying billions worth of NFTs because they're crazy people who like that and they have too much money. So they're doing that. Now, the trend, <laughs> the new trend is fancy art people being like, hey, crypto billionaire, check this out. I got this new thing. You're into NFTs? I got the next big thing. Paintings. I they're know! Back. So they're, they're <laughs> yes! wooing all these yes! NFT buyers into the art market as like a gateway back to paintings. And that's a big market again. Okay, but how do I know no one else owns that? Well, actually, here's the great thing. Uh, you actually can't right click on this painting I made. You, can't. <laughs> you got this museum glass. No, I hand uh, it to you in the meat space. <laughs> okay, but is it numbered on the blockchain? No, it's right it's, here. And the ch right here, uh, you can wrap a real chain around it, and then people won't be able to take it, like the the pens at the bank. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the fiction that constantly portrays billionaires as like having secret underground fight clubs and squid games and shit is so much nicer than reality where they're just like, I'm going to buy a pretend monkey. <laughs> if elon musk was revealed to be running a squid gums i'd be like oh god that's so nice people got cardio that's so much better than what i thought he was doing oh (laughs) oh it's so much better i love when these guys because you're gonna get these emails i love when these guys just like will accuse you of not getting it and then you're like well actually i've read a lot about it so i have questions then you they're like i don't i don't know the answer to any of those questions i don't Literally not. Like, okay, well, then I actually get it. And the, maybe the reality is you you don't get it. You ever think that maybe that's the that's the thing is like you don't you're actually the one that doesn't get it. Well, here's the thing. If anybody has any um, you know comments or questions about this for for us, I should announce that we are selling an NFT of this podcast. <laughs> one more time. So if you've got some crypto you want to get rid of, if you know any billionaires. I do have some crypto I want to get rid of. Either. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He just wants to get rid of it for a, a way more money than he bought. It. <laughs> Name a th- I'll NFT the shit out of anything you want. Name a thing, I'll sell you an NFT of it happily. Amazing. Happily. Eighty percent done. Oh, fuck, that's so great. It's so fucking delicious. We should start an NFT like dick pic gallery. Oh, Ooh. should we? Right. Yes. That would be. I did actually see a a fun thing on Twitter, which I'm sure is not legally valid, which is if anyone ever sends you an unsolicited dick pic, make an NFT of it so that they have to buy it from you. (laughs) They have to buy it. (laughs) If somebody sends you an unsolicited dick pic, can you not use that? Like, I, because my, I always wanted to just like find somebody that gets a lot of unsolicited, make a coffee table book. Out of all Ooh. the unsolicited dick pics and just like credit each photo with the name of the sender and just see if anyone's like ballsy enough, literally, to say anything about it. <laughs> all right. Well, on that note, we're going to close it <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Tom and Cecil. Really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's our Thanks pleasure. for having us, man. Pleasure as always. And, of course, a big thanks to Eli Bosnick and a big thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the generous new donors who will have their genitals complimented next time around. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign-off. You could just be responsible in reality with your money. Nope. Yeah. Tracks. How's the Bitcoin doing? Bad. So mean. Bad. <laughs> How's your crypto college fund for your child doing? Not great. And <laughs> <laughs> NYU take NFTs? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they are the currency of the future. Hey. <laughs> Carrot Top told me that. <laughs> Do you want to do the skit with us on the line, too, so we can laugh at your skit? I mean, you just want to be laughed at. Thank you. <laughs> you need some attention. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want like you to you feel like I, you skit. missed out on anything. I, I, prom- you don't I promise, get a lot of Eli, attention. I wouldn't laugh if you read it in front of me. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> do you want to do the skit, though? Do you want to see the background and do the skit so we could be your, your fucking guest laugh track? I'll be happy I to do, do it. I appreciate that, yeah. <laughs> okay, <it's> so <laughs> Thank good. you. We could just, you could sample that. Hey, Eli, maybe once in a while you could return the favor too. You know, who knows? Oh! You know, <laughs> you know when we say something really amazing and funny and you just, <laughs> like, 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 you know, that. Yeah, like exactly. that. Yeah, like that. Exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> just like, <laughs> whatever that noise is you do. I'm better than this chuckle. The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC, copyright 2022, all rights reserved. 
Now through February 16th, join a clean and spacious Planet Fitness for zero enrollment and only $10 a month. With tons of equipment and free fitness training, it's the perfect place for everybody to work out. Even me, Mr. I can't sleep at night, so I keep dosing off during the day. Especially you, Snoozy. You'll rest easier and feel fit-tacular. Wait, how did you get in here? Join in club or at planetfitness.com. Zero enrollment, $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Hurry. Deal ends February 16th. See club for details.